Some of the most frequent questions we get asked by our viewers is how hard is it to make a boating YouTube channel? What equipment do we use? And do we make any money? Well, this video is an attempt to answer those questions. One look in your eyes and I find it When you're leaving, my mind are rewinded When you got it this good, you don't fight it We have been making boating videos for YouTube for oh, about six years now, and we are often approached by fans who are considering making their own YouTube channel. So we put this video together to show our process and how we create our videos. We hope you find it helpful. Now we are far from experts. In fact, this is really more of a hobby for us. Now, we did own our own photography studio, but we hired videographers and people to do the editing for us. In fact, when we started this channel six years ago, I had zero experience editing videos. In the beginning, I hardly put any time at all into editing. We just didn't think anyone was going to watch our videos. In fact, even now, I only put about 10 hours of editing into each video. To me, the videos are never really finished. They're just abandoned. Now, I would really love to go back and fine-tune each of our videos, and I know most of them really need it. But in order to publish at least one video a week, which is what we try to do, and enjoy the other things we have going on in our life, such as boating, we really need to move on. Now, if you're looking for professional advice on how to create YouTube videos, this is not really the video for you. What we're going to try to explain is how we do it, what our process is, and what works for us. So why are we making this video now? Well, we put out a video a couple of weeks back where Lynn and I were having kind of a hard time and she recorded herself in the salon and I think she was having a bit of a moment. I guess we were kind of questioning whether we wanted to continue doing this. And I can tell you that the, the response from our viewership was just incredible. So many people, hundreds and hundreds of people contacted us and you know, expressed how much they enjoyed our videos and asked us if we would continue. And you know, that meant the world to us. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we are continuing and we're going to keep doing videos. And then that also inspired us to do this video here talking about the process and what we go through when we make them. So let me start with the why. Why do we make videos? And uh, well, I can tell you this, it has nothing to do with money, that's for sure. And I'll get to that in a little bit. We'll discuss the amount of money we make doing videos uh, towards the end of this video. So why do we make these videos? Well, there's various reasons. Um, uh, educating others. Uh, when Lynn and I started out six years ago, we knew nothing and we learned a lot by going to YouTube and watching other people's videos. Uh, we do it um, to document our lives, you know, to kind of relive our adventures. We get to watch them again and, and document them for our children and for our friends. Um, but another reason is that Lynn and I are very social people. If you've watched our videos, you know we like to meet people, we like to entertain, we like to share our lives with other people. And creating these videos enables us to do that. And we have met hundreds of people because of the videos that we create. And we've been fortunate enough that we've touched tens of thousands of lives. And the feeling that gives to Lynn and I, well, that's, that's just priceless. So let me talk about the shooting process. As you're probably aware if you watch our videos that Lynn shoots 95% of the footage, which is why you see this mug all the time and not her so much. Um, I'd love to tell you that you know we have it all planned out. We put together a storyboard and it's all thoughtful and we know what we're gonna do. Um, and sometimes that happens, you know, like this particular video, we, we thought about it. But quite often, and most often actually, uh, it, Lynn shoots what she fancies. And uh, other than some go-tos that she's always doing, like shots from the bow when we're docking or arriving someplace, um, or maybe the interview of me up on the flybridge. But more often than not, it's she's shooting what she likes and she kind of tosses me the cards and say, hey, make something out of this. And well, I do my best to do that. And sometimes it works. Other times, eh, we'll see. So let's talk about equipment. Martini glasses, essential. Actually, let's start with cameras. The main cameras that Lynn uses are Lumex G85s made by Panasonic. In fact, that's what I'm looking at right now. And so it's what I'm looking at over here too. It's another Lumex. 
And the reason we have two of these G85s is because a couple of years ago, our first one that we bought went haywire. I don't even know what was wrong with it. It wouldn't work, it wouldn't function, and it was gonna to cost too much to fix. So I bought another one because we already had the lenses and attachments. So I threw it in a drawer, forgot about it. A couple of years later, I open up the drawer, I see it sitting there, I'm like, ha, let me try it anyway. I turned the thing on and sure enough, it works. So now we have two functioning G85 by Lumix. Now that works out well for Lynn because she has two different lenses that she uses. One is the 50 millimeter, uh, which I'm looking at right now. It's a 1.7 and it is also, uh, well, I say 50 because I'm used to film from old school. It's really a 25 millimeter, but with these cameras, you double the millimeters and you end up with 50 millimeter equivalent. And the other lens that she's using over here is the kit lens that comes with the camera. And I believe it's a 12 to 26. Now she'll use this 50 all the time. She'll use it for B-roll, she'll use it for interviews like this, and um, it's really the go-to lens. Now the other lens is good when we're in a more of an enclosed space, like on the flybridge. She always uses this lens here because uh, it's wider and we're kind of, you know, there's not a lot of space up there, so this way she can get me in and get some of the background. So that's the main cameras that Lynn uses. Now, when we're out about town, if we're at a botanical garden, we're going to a museum where we're walking the streets, she tends to use her Osmo Pocket here. I think it's a Pocket 2, I'm not even sure. But it's a small little camera. It has a gimbal, so it's very stabilized. We can put a mic on it. Uh, we've been using these for a few years now, and they work very, very well. And, uh, and you know, it's just portable, fits in her purse, and it's just easy to carry around. Now, the other camera that she uses a lot is this, uh, DJI Action. We actually, this is the regular Action. What we mostly use now is called the Action 3. And these are nice little cameras. She uses them for stationary shots. Like for instance, when we're docking, if you see us pulling into a port, or even when we're pulling up an anchor, this is the one that she attaches to the bow. Uh, she also uses this uh, when we're at the bar. You see a camera sitting at the edge of the bar and we're you know chatting, that's this camera. Uh, the other thing about it is it's waterproof to something odd like 40 meters, I don't even know. But so when you see all the underwater shots, uh, they're always done with this camera here. Now another camera that we use quite often is the drone. Now we have a Mavic Air 2 drone now. We used to have one of those Phantom 4 Professionals, which if you watch one of my earlier videos, I sunk into the middle of the uh, Chesapeake Bay one day. <laughs> so we replaced that with the Mavic Air 2, and we love this. It's, it's, such, it's such a better drone. It's, it, 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 there's all kinds of cool things that it can do. It's much easier to handle and to maneuver, and it's very small. You can just, you know, Lynn throws it in her boat bag, and we take it up to the top of Boo Boo Hill. It's just, it's a beautiful camera. Highly recommend it. Now just, you know, I'm not being sponsored by any of these people, uh, but hey, you know, Panasonic or uh, DJI, feel free to send me free stuff, I won't complain. Now that's really it, I think, when it comes to our cameras, uh, although we do have one of these really old GoPro cubes that occasionally we use. If you ever see a shot of me on the bridge and it's kind of over my shoulder while I'm uh, piloting the boat, that's from this little old GoPro Cube. I don't even know if we even used it this year, but we have in the past. Now, I think that's about it for cameras. I mean, I'll talk about lighting a little bit. Now, we mostly shoot with available light, you know, the sun. You know, most of our footage is from outside. You know, obviously we're boating, we're on islands and things, and we're just using sunlight. Now, occasionally we do need supplemental light. Now, for example, when I'm on the bridge, uh, Lynn is filming me kind of an interview while I'm on the bridge. I'm usually backlit, and you see it's very bright behind me. She tries to soften that up a little bit by using an LED light aimed at me to kind of you know, get me out of the shadows. And the light that we're using, I don't, even, I don't even know the name of it. Uh, we've gone through a couple over the years. It's just a small, portable, uh, battery-operated, so we don't have to plug it in. It can sit on top of the camera, or she can put it to the side if she wants. That's the main light that she uses when we're on the boat. Now, we do have some ring lights that we use from time to time. Mostly when we're live streaming, we'll use them just to bring a little more light into the room. However, now that we're back in Philadelphia, and for the first time really ever, uh, we kind of set up a little studio here in my man cave billiard room and we've uh, just recently purchased a couple of soft boxes we used to use soft boxes a lot back in our photography days but i haven't really used them for video because on the boat there's just really not enough room for these but i thought well if i'm going to set something up here at my house let me get some soft boxes and i'll try and light it a little bit better maybe up our game some so we purchased these soft boxes they're really 
inexpensive. These things were like $75 on Amazon for two of them with stands and bulbs. So very inexpensive. Now, as far as microphones go, uh, we mostly use our, well, if I have it right here, it's these DJI lavalier mics. We've had other lavaliers in the past, but we we purchased these last year and we really love these. They're they're obviously they're wireless, they're, they're portable, they're easy to charge, they sound very good. In fact, I think I'm probably gonna use the sound from these for this video. Not quite sure yet because the other microphone that we use is this one over here and that is a condenser mic Audio Technica, I think, makes it. And I use that when I do voiceovers in the videos where I think I need to add a little bit of narration to help tell the story. I tend to use that mic. Now, we do have a couple of shotgun mics that we've used over the years. We're really not using them now. Back before we had the lavaliers, we were trying that out. But what we found was it was really picking up a lot of the engine rumbling when we were trying to speak. So that's why we switched over to these lavaliers. Now, of course, we have lots of accessories. We've got tripods and we have light stands and we have uh, neutral density filters for for the cameras and uh, all those type of doodads. We have a lot of things that attach cameras to poles or cameras to the bow, you know. So there, there's just so much of that stuff that we use. Lynn has some kind of a chest cam. Uh, which she walks around with the boat and sometimes she turns the camera backwards and it's a boob cam at that point You guys never see that footage unless you're on our Pornhub channel uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Now I think that's about it for equipment But let me tell you about the computer because for the last six years I've been editing everything on my laptop it's a good laptop, but it's not really made for editing, and it's always been a little bit of a pain in the neck. So my son, Chase, convinced me that I have to go and build a dedicated uh, desktop computer just for editing. So we went out and did that about maybe a month ago, month and a half ago. And I think my last three videos have been with this new computer. As far as software, uh, until recently, I was using a program called HitFilm Pro. Um, and it was starting to get buggy and the new releases weren't all that great. So I decided I was going to try another software and I switched over to DaVinci Resolve. I was hesitant to try new software. I really didn't want to have to go through the learning process. But since we had built this new computer, I thought, well, maybe this is a good time to make the switch for the software too. And what a great decision that was. Uh, I have used this software now for maybe three videos, maybe four, the last three or four. So if you feel like watching them, uh, you can tell me if you, you think it's uh, working out for me or not. I have found it to be much more efficient and I think the quality is improving too. And it's just much more enjoyable using this program than it was using HitFilm. So I'm not being sponsored by either of these companies. I'm just telling you what I use. And right now it's DaVinci Resolve. Now, as far as process, I try to make our videos maybe two to three days of our lives when we're out on a trip. Lynn will typically shoot maybe 175 to 200 clips, which I will then edit down to maybe 125 that make it to the final video. I'll trim the clips down to the length that I want. I'll add them to the timeline. I will then look for some music that fits the mood. Maybe I'll make some maps from Google Earth. If I have time, I might even put in some sound effects. And then quite often, I'll add a voiceover on the video, especially if I think maybe the story is not being told or I might need to explain what's going on. Now, at this point, if I'm happy with the video, I will rip it down to an MP4 file and upload it to YouTube as a kind of a test video that I'll watch on my home entertainment system. And I do this because when I edit, I usually edit with headphones on and I'm not really good at judging the volume of music and vocals so much. I try, but it's always better for me if I could just watch it on an entertainment system the way maybe other people might. And then I can find some of the mistakes I made, maybe visually or, you know, in the audio. Now, I can only do this when I'm at home in Philadelphia. When I'm on the boat, we don't have a television that we watch on the boat. And so I watch everything through my little laptop, which has terrible speakers. And so you might notice a difference in quality from the videos that we edit while we're underway, as opposed to, say, the videos that we're editing now at our, my home studio here, or at least sitting in my living room with a nice computer and I can play things back and see how things are really going to play when people are watching them on their TV or they're watching them on their phone or they're, they're watching them on their computer. So that's the next step in the process. 
Now, once I've gone through viewing the video in this manner, I'll go back and I'll fix any of the mistakes and I'll make the final product. Now, typically at that point, I will post it to our Patreon Facebook page, uh, maybe about a week in advance of it actually being released to the regular public, which we try to do every Sunday morning. Well, that's about it. That's how we make our boating videos. So let's talk about money. We have about 40,000 subscribers and we've been doing this We've been technically doing it about six years, maybe even six and a half, but we've been serious about it for four or five years. So YouTube pays us about eight tenths of a penny for every time somebody watches one of our videos. Now, eight tenths of a penny is actually rather high. Most YouTube channels only get paid about three tenths or four tenths of a penny. And the reason we get paid more than most other YouTube channels is you. They base the amount they pay off of advertisers bidding on advertising on somebody's content. It turns out that our viewership tends to be more affluent than the viewers of say other boating channels or just channels in general. We have subscribers uh, from every uh, walk of life, basically every economic condition, uh, male, female, all age groups, uh, all parts of the world actually. But uh, we tend to attract people who are maybe middle-aged like us, a little bit more affluent, have more money to spend. And because of that, advertisers are willing to spend more money putting their ads on our channel than they are on, say, other channels. So all of this translates into about $15,000 a year. That is what we're currently getting from YouTube. Now we put out about 50 videos a year, so that comes out to about $300 per video. Now I put about 10 hours editing into video and Lynn probably puts about five hours into shooting our videos. So we got about 15 hours in and that comes out to, well, $20 an hour. That's what we make producing videos. In fact, Lynn's always joking with me because I pay my employees $35 an hour to go to the office and work so that I can stay home and make $20 an hour producing videos. So can having a boating YouTube channel really be a business? Well, not at 40,000 subscribers and $15,000 a year. But as you know, there are several channels um, that make much more than that, mostly sailing channels uh, that have a lot of viewership and they are able to make a pretty good living doing YouTube channels. Now, Lynn and I, we've considered maybe upping our game a bit, maybe completely retiring from our business world and uh, doubling up and producing maybe twice as many videos and spending a lot more time doing it and uh, maybe spending more time soliciting Patreons or selling merchandise. And I suppose we could probably, you know, spin things around and make a living doing this if we wanted to, or at least a good retirement income doing it. Uh, and who knows, maybe we'll do that. Uh, who knows what the future will bring? I guess it depends on how our channel evolves over the next couple of years. And that is not to discourage anyone. Uh, you know, we have our niche. We do what we do. And there's a certain number of people who like to watch our channel. Uh, there are other niches out there where people can attract more viewers and, you know, more Patreons and sell more merch. And maybe that's in your future. But for us, this is what's working currently. This is where we are in the stage of our development of our YouTube channel. Now, before I go, let me just mention one more thing. If you are considering uh, starting your own boating YouTube channel or any YouTube channel for that matter, um, be prepared to be criticized. Be prepared for trolls. Now, I don't mind constructive criticism. I am always willing to learn. And I don't mind when people uh, are critical of the quality of what I'm doing. Uh, again, I'm always willing to learn and I try to improve every year. Now, when it comes to criticizing our content, I kind of take a, a different approach. If, if you're not someone who is out there, you know, producing content like we are, exposing yourself, um, I don't pay much attention to that. I mean, the, the, the creative process is, it's very personal and it's very subjective. And, you know, you have to do what feels right to you. You have to um, do what you love, really, because if you're trying to produce content to please other people, um, you're just gonna burn out. Now, it's different if you're a professional, you're a cinematographer, you're paid to produce content for a specific reason. 
Uh, but if you're doing what we do and you're hoping to somehow create a YouTube channel, you're hoping to get a following, you really got to focus on doing something that you love because you're going to put a lot of time into it. And um, if it's something that is not entertaining to you, does not make you laugh once in a while, or there's, there's a lot better ways to spend your time and you're just going to burn out. And that's all I have to say about that. Now, if you are going to create your own YouTube channel, let us know so we can check it out. Until then, please like, subscribe, ring the bell, and, well, we hope to see you on the water. Cheers. Oh, and Roger out.